Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and whatever time it is where you're at. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Hey, man, hallelujah. Man, I can't wait to share my story with you. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys about my testimony today, and man, what a, what a powerful year this has been uh, for me. What a tremendous year this has been. A year ago, I gave my life to Jesus. It's ironic because I spent so much of my life denying Him. Since coming to the Lord, I've been led to bring others to know Jesus. One of the ways I'm trying to do this is through spreading the Word, using the gifts that God has given me. You know, it just I'm naturally a, a charismatic person, so I love talking to people. One of my gifts, though, happens to be the gift of creativity. I was led to take this gift and create an e-commerce store named Agape Elihi. Agape Elihi stands for the highest form of love for my God. This store is Christian apparel and outdoor gear. It's designed to help as a conversation starter uh, and to bring you out of the wilderness. I'm anxious to share my testimony with you all, but I should give you a little background about how I came out of the wilderness first. The one thing that I have learned this past year about relationships, as I have yearned to grow my relationship with God, I learned that every relationship needs good communication. I mean, I knew this all along, right? I was in the military for, for 20 years and being married. Communication is key. There are several ways God speaks to us. The easiest way to hear His voice is by reading the Bible. And the best way for God to hear our voice is through prayer. So, let us start off with prayer. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to give us the Gospels to share, a Savior to lift up. Father, I pray now that you give me wisdom to share my testimony in a manner that resonates with all those watching. That my testimony will help those caught in the lies and deceptive bondage by the devil and his agents. That they will be able to see the parallels in their lives if there are, right? And, and find their way to you, Jesus. Father, I pray for all of those watching that are dealing with depression, suicidal thoughts, low energy, thoughts of lust, anything that leads them away from, from your purpose for them. Addictions to alcohol, addictions to drugs, pornography, anything, anything to help expose all forms of idolatry in their lives. Father, I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. During my life, I've been called the devil so many times. I lost count. We all have different sides we show people. Most people that knew me growing up only saw the side I chose to expose to them. The friendly, happy-go-lucky Jeff but rooted deep down inside was a type of evilness that was constantly scheming against everyone in every situation. I'm not proud of it. I was never in control of those awful sinful thoughts or urges. I was tormented by them. Now that I have that out of the way, let us get started. I grew up never knowing what love was. I never felt loved, despite everyone's attempts. I never felt love from my parents, my wife, my son, my family, my friends, my colleagues, even the, even the family dog. I was spiritually blinded from being able to recognize it and receive it. As a child, I was exposed to the demonic world, unknowingly, I imagine, and I really hope. I remember that my mother being involved in occult practices that on the surface seemed innocent enough. And I'm sure my mother didn't realize that's what she was, she was doing, I hope. My mother was heavily involved in tarot card reading. She had a Ouija board uh, that my sister and I would often play with. Um, I know a lot of us did in the 80s. You know, it was just kind of the thing to do. My mom had crystals and, and all sorts of other things in the house. I remember my mother telling me about her astral projecting from time to time. And I thought, wow, 
strange. Well, at a very young age, I remember waking up to demons dancing around my room so often. I remember feeling the presence of evil in my room, my home, my presence. I remember visions of demons protruding from walls above my bed while I slept. My childhood was terrifying, especially when I was left alone. I remember times when I was prompted to do life-endangering things and I could not explain why I was doing them. These promptings weren't of my own, but I just felt driven to do them. I tried electrocuting myself when I was around six or seven. I used to fling myself off the roof of our house. I was constantly stealing things. I was constantly destroying things. I was always trying to deceive people. I was addicted at a very early age to lust, pornography, theft, deception, hate, and just about anything else you could think of. I was that sneaky, mis mischievous kid, right? Some of you are probably thinking, eh, so what? You're a kid. You didn't know any better. Yeah, maybe. A lot of you are probably drawing parallels into your own childhood. You know, I felt alone. Even when surrounded by a lot of people, no matter where I was, out in public, school, whatever, I always felt by myself. I always felt depressed. I thought about suicide constantly. I would not say I was suicidal, but I often thought about how I would kill myself. How would I do it? So fast forward to when I was 45 years old. It was about a year ago. At this point, I've been dealing with a lifetime of low energy. Depression, suicidal thoughts, fear, obsession with lustful thoughts, addiction to pornography, addiction to masturbation, chronic pain, and so, so much more. Every time I'd give in and participate in my addictions to compensate for the depression, low energy, suicidal thoughts, like a drug addict, I'd get an instant high. But like that drug addict, followed by a hard crash. It was a living hell, and I could not recognize that I was being tormented. I lived an entire life of being tormented. Early last year, January, I kept having these, these strange, peaceful thoughts about death. For the first time, I was not even thinking about suicide. But I was at complete peace if I were to die. I was not able to I was not able to, to see see death any other way but of peace. And I was okay with it. It's weird. Part of my personality is I love to figure things out. I love to research any and every topic and learn about it as much as I can. So naturally I wanted to know well, what would happen if I died. This led me to research near-death experiences. I watched dozens of near-death experience testimonies. Of all the testimonies I watched, the majority of the people that died found themselves in a dark place full of torment. All of their stories matched, matched each other's. And I kept noticing that they all cried out to Jesus and they were saved and given another chance. I drew a lot of parallels to the, to the lives they lived. So now I was no longer at peace about death. I was completely terrified. Gosh, I was scared. How do I escape hell's grips on my soul? It was not until I watched my last near-death experience testimony, part of my salvation. There were there were three people interviewing a fourth person. I want to say it was on It's Supernatural, ISM. The fourth person gave his testimony, and, and just like the others, was saved by crying out to Jesus Christ. He gave his life to Jesus. I thought, that's it. I need Jesus. I need Jesus right now. At the end of the interview, the person leading the discussion said, and I'm going to paraphrase what she said, but she says, if you want eternal salvation, if you want to be free from eternal torment, give your life to Jesus. If you're prepared to give your life to Jesus, then follow along in the sinner's prayer with us. I had such a heavy heart. I was terrified. I never felt such fear in all my life. I pressed in though. I was desperate. 
Oh, only God truly knows how desperate I was. The prayer leader said, Lift your hands to the Lord and repeat after me. So as she led the prayer, I felt something happening to me. My eyes began to well up. The heaviness in my chest began to lift. At the conclusion of this short prayer, my eyes exploded into tears. I was enveloped in the energy that I'd never felt before. What was this feeling? I couldn't stop crying. My eyelids were so heavy. I all of a sudden found what was hidden from me my entire life. I felt love. I felt God's love. It shook me to my core. It's the most powerful thing I've ever felt. All of a sudden, my wife of 21 years looked so different to me. Now when I saw her, it felt like the very first time when I saw her, the very first time we kissed. My son looked completely different to me now. Now I didn't, now I didn't see all of his shortcomings. All I saw were his victories. Oh man, what do I do now? This is what I thought, man. Does everybody know about this? I need to find a church. I knew my good friends, Tony and Margarita, went to Shiloh Christian Ministries. So I figured I'd give that a shot. Only I did not want to wear church clothes. I detest getting dressed up. So on January 31st, my son and I walked into Shiloh. I wore a hoodie, a pair of jeans, and a hat to cover my eyes. The hat was, the hat was because I had no control over when I was going to cry or not. My son found seats for us. Unknowingly, my son sat across from Tony and Margarita. They didn't know we were coming. Tony and Margarita saw us and greeted us with the biggest hugs and smiles and love. I wept most of the service. At the time, at, at the end of the service, I pulled myself together. I started moving towards the altar. I stood there crippled. It was all I could do to walk forward. There were two figures in front of me. It was Tony and Margarita. I knew both of them. They were my people. I've always felt the connection to them. They peered, they, they peered in my direction. Their eyes were like a window of peace. They said, Jeff, can we pray for you? Oh, the flood of emotions that came over me were so strong. I saw them through my tear blurred version, vision as they both reached out to me. They had what I was looking for. I finally found it. Okay, we can do this, I said to myself. Man, I fell forward, buried my face in their shoulders. I surrendered. I was broken. I've gone an entire year looking through a different lens. Everywhere I look, I see hope and love. I no longer suffer from the torment I once was a victim to. All of my addictions were released from my low energy, and my depression gone. It happened as fast as it took me to say the sinner's prayer. Since that moment, a fire has burned in my belly to help others find what I found. To help others be released from the bondage the evil one has kept you slave to. The key to salvation is surrender. You have to truly surrender yourself. Pride will hold you back. Pride of oneself will be the biggest obstacle to anyone finding and maintaining a relationship with Jesus. If you suffer like I did, know this. You do not need to be bound by suffering and sin any longer. Jesus wants to free you so that you can have a happy and productive life. God has a purpose for your life. We were constantly distracted from fulfilling our purpose. It is written, Roman chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you are tired, broken, depressed, suicidal, feel hopeless, or you're just ready for a fresh anointing, please follow me along in this prayer. I'll read it once, and then I'll try to recite it slowly so that you can follow along. 
Father, I know that I have broken your laws, and my sins have separated me from you. I am truly sorry, and now I want to turn away from my past sinful life toward you. Please forgive me and help me avoid sinning. I believe that your Son, Jesus Christ, died for my sins and was resurrected from the dead, is alive, and hears my prayer. I invite Jesus to become the Lord of my life, to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, now I'll recite this slowly for you. If you feel compelled, raise your hands. Um, it's in humility that we do this. Father, I know that I have broken your laws and my sins have separated me from you. I am truly sorry and now I want to turn away from my past sinful life. Please forgive me and help me avoid sinning again. I believe that your son Jesus Christ died for my sins, was resurrected from the dead, is alive, and hears my prayer. I invite Jesus to become the Lord of my life, to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you decided to repent of your sins and receive Christ today, welcome to God's family. Now, as a way to grow closer to Him, the Bible tells us to follow up on our commitment. The Bible says, get water baptized as commanded by Christ. Tell someone else about your new faith in Christ. Spend time with God each day. It does not have to be a long period of time. Just develop the daily habit of praying to Him and reading His Word. Ask God to increase your faith in your understanding of the Bible. Seek fellowship with other followers of Jesus. Develop a group of believing friends to answer your questions and support you. Find a local church where you can worship God. Please reach out to me if you need assistance. I will be posting more videos and content you know, just to help strengthen your relationship with Jesus in the near future. Um, I'm going to try to release a video at least once a week. That's, that's the goal. Um, hopefully more. Hopefully not less. I pray that all you do is to glorify the name above all names, Jesus Christ. I know a lot of people are scared of church, you know, because of the hypocrites that go to church, right? And so I hear that so often when I mention, oh, you, should, you go to church, you know? And they say, no, I don't go because so many people that go to church are all hypocrites. Well, I ask you, are you going to church for the hypocrites? Are you going to church to develop a relationship with people that go there? Or do you go to church to develop your relationship with God? Think on that. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you for joining me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.